We're here to lay Gina to rest today. My name is Michael Pelzar from the funeral home. And I appreciate you all coming up to pay your, your respects this morning. Gina wanted a very simple service and that's what we're gonna give her today. Uh, I'm gonna share a poem called, I Thought of You Today. I thought of you today, but that is nothing new. I thought about you yesterday and the days before that too. I think of you in silence. I often speak your name. All I have are memories and your picture in a frame. Your memory is a keepsake from which I'll never part. God has you in his arms. I have you in my heart. And then I told Gina I'd share the Native American prayer. And that'd be our closing prayer today. And then I'll offer a chance for anyone to share a story or condolence. Native American prayer. I give you this one thought to keep. I am with you still. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glint on snow. I am the sunlight of, of ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circle flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not think of me as gone. I am with you still in each new dawn. Is there anybody that wants to share a few words about Gina at this time? Um, so I'm Mono Sonoris and I uh, took lessons with Gina from the ages of uh, 3 to 14, 15, but obviously we stayed friends for a lot longer than that and um, I think my earliest, I was telling my uh, mom this other day, I think my earliest memory ever in my life that I can remember is, is of Kino playing the piano. Uh, it was for my fourth birthday and I have this vague memory of just like her playing some song and me just like spinning like in circles with somebody like holding hands with them and like just kind of uh, you know feeling really dizzy and just feeling really delirious and really happy and I I think um, Gina was the first person who really, you know, taught me that music is music is more than just a fun activity. It's the thing that can be your life and it can course through your veins. And uh, I took lessons with her, like I said, from the ages of three to basically middle school. And uh, I have so many, I mean, I don't remember all the details, but my mom tells me things about how I was just such a nuisance to her like as a kid and <laughs> just be yelling screaming in the lessons and uh, you know she was she would do her best to like rein me in basically and over the years I think I just developed so much discipline through her um, and you know I'll just never forget that house especially like just the the way it kind of had a character on like any other place I would go to in, in Massachusetts. Uh, it's such a unique house, and seeing her and Stella and Wendy there uh, during lessons, and then all of her pets, of course, Gizmo, <laughs> Romeo. Uh, it was just such a good time every week. Um, I think I don't know all the details about her life, and I, I was too young, I think, when I when I knew her. But just knowing my mom, that she went through a lot had a lot of hardships on top of all the good she provided to the world um, really makes the work that she did so much more uh, like meaningful and, and tough and, and, and heroic and I just know that she she was bedridden for so many years at towards the end of her life and it would become less of uh, her coming to us and you know us finding carving time out of our lives you know having moved out of Massachusetts to like go see her and it just changed the dynamic changed somewhat but at the same time uh, I would whenever I saw her she would give me some little piece of knowledge she would check it on us she would I'd be going to college and she would you know give some advice about what to do in college and she was just always so funny and like helpful and just set, like, like, such a sage in my life and, um, I feel like there's just so much more I have to say about her. I'm, for context, I'm, I, I, music is really my life now. I, I, I'm a music journalist. I, I play piano still. And I owe that all to Gina. I would have never even thought of this path for her. So I really, really uh, 
miss her. I'm gonna think about her forever. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Sherry. Okay. Um, yeah, just to add on to that, I feel like Gina is one of the most uh, thoughtful people. Just like full of conviction, full of curiosity. Like she. She was always she was always open to whatever ideas we had to offer in class. Like uh, she would always try to make things super relatable to us. Uh, like we started when we were like three years old, learning right, from her, and she would like draw pictures in her books, like make everything super um, just like easy to learn as kids. Um, and I definitely wouldn't be on the path I'm on without her. So like part of her is always going to be with me which is like really crazy to think of a musician that like someone could have this um, much impact on my, my whole career and my love for the music so I'm always going to remember everything she's taught me like the lessons along the way I'm super grateful and yeah that house is going to be stuck in my memory forever Thank both of you for putting personal touch on today's service. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, thank you. And uh, I really appreciate uh, everybody who's here. My uh, history with Gina goes back more than 25 years. When I first moved back to Massachusetts uh, from South Carolina, uh, she came to help me tune my piano. And after that, she asked me, you know, are you taking any lessons? And I said, not right now. And then she started to give me lessons. So I was one of her older students. But uh, over the years, uh, I moved away from Westboro, but I kept in touch with Gina, and we became very, very good friends. Uh, in fact, Gina and I would refer to each other as brother and sister even though we come from very, very different backgrounds. But the one thing we have in common is uh, we both had to work hard. Jenna used to say she learned from the school of hard knocks, and it was true. Uh, you know, Jenna was very scrappy. Uh, she would, uh, but above all, uh, Jenna had a big heart. You know, she would go all out to help you. I remember after, you know, I had a, I, at the time I had a, uh, an upright piano and uh, I told Gina I was looking for, you know, actually she, Gina was the one who told me, she said, you know, at some point your technique is going to be so good, you, you, the upright piano can't keep up. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't quite believe her, I said, what did you mean? And then she explained the mechanics to me and sure enough, at some point, I, my upright piano couldn't cope, so she said, "You need a, a you know, a, a, a baby grand." But and I was looking. I remember, in fact, coming here today, I remember driving all the way, uh, much further. It was in New Hampshire, but way up north, to look for for a, a baby grand. Turned out to be not for me. But Gina was in the meantime looking for me, and she found in those days. There were no, you know, no internet, <laughs> so it was uh, classified ads, and she found this classified ad of uh, of a lady, a French lady, in, uh, in Rhode Island, who wanted to uh, sell a piano. And she said, she called me. She said, well, I think you need to check this out." And I went there to Rhode Island, checked out the piano, and sure enough, it was beautiful. But not only that. Gina came with me to come and haggle with the French woman <laughs> until the French woman got angry with Gina. <laughs> but that's the kind of person Gina was. She didn't stop at, you know, the minimum. She went all out uh, to do things, uh, you know, for people. Uh, you know, just again, you know, I won't take too much more of your time, but again to illustrate how selfless Gina was. So, where well, you know, uh, uh, of course, she's been bedridden for the past 13 years, which is a lot. I, I will see her occasionally, you know, uh, say hello to her. 
and a couple of weeks ago, no, a couple of months ago, she said, you know, she said, I can still give you lessons. I said, oh, how are we going to do that? She said, oh, we can use Zoom or something. I said, okay. So she gave me an assignment. She said, go and work on one piece, just one piece. And then two weeks, come back to me. And, uh, and then we'll do something. But uh, as I was, uh, you know, uh, telling this gentleman, I got sidetracked by other things, you know, doing the fundraising and all that stuff, couldn't do the assignment. Until I had, uh, Wendy called me and said, Gina is in the hospital, she wants to see you. And then I went there on Wednesday. And now there's Gina, very sick and stuff. But the first thing she said was, where were you? She said, I've been waiting it's too much for you, you know, for your lesson. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the kind of heart that Gina had. Uh, up to the, uh, you know, in her deathbed, she was looking out for me. And that uh, really touched me. So uh, I really appreciate everything, Gina. I mean, we are just representative. Gina touched many people's lives. But we are just a few of the people uh, who are here to represent uh, those uh, those lives that she touched. I know Wendy would love to be here. Uh, unfortunately, she, she's, uh, she's sick, but uh, uh, her heart is with us. And, uh, we pray that, uh, you know, with the, the one final thing I will say about Gina is she had a great faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in her, uh, you know, her final years, she actually devoted her time to writing stories for children based on the, on, on the Bible. She, she, you know, she felt that was the mission that God had, had given to her. And in fact, she's entrusted that to me to make sure that I distribute it to, uh, to children. And I, of course, will honor uh, her wish. Uh, so Gina, uh, you know, we are very, uh, you know, the world uh, is a lesser place uh, without Gina. And uh, we are all proud to have known yeah, thank you. Well, nice. this concludes the services unless you want yes, to say a few words. Yes, I will help you with this. Yes. yes. Um, so I'm Lee and um, how I come to know Gina is that um, my sons, I have two sons and at the time I don't remember you know, how old they, they were actually, but about maybe 10, 12. Um, so we just moved to Westworld not long and then I was looking uh, for a teacher and somehow I found her and um, she uh, right away struck me as someone who was very kind-hearted um, so my uh, my two sons took lessons from her not for a long time uh, to be honest but um, between Tina and myself uh, and Wendy we kept in touch through the years and um, so I I know her life in the time that was most difficult for her, but throughout um, she was a very strong person, extremely strong person, um, great um, heart, you know, her heart is one thing that I really uh, admire and respect, and uh, she doesn't you know, let life knock her down, like you say, <laughs> she learned good from the, the school of hard life, and even despite all the struggles, all the hardships that she you know, endured, um, always think of and someone else. You know, always have someone's welfare on her mind. So, um, yeah, so I consider her a, a great friend and a um, great honor to have gotten to know her. And um, I, I'm here to pay my respects and to keep you know, her in my memory. Rest well, Tina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Once again, I thank you all for being here this morning and sharing this time with us. Uh -huh.